Hello and welcome to yet another video by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in this video I'll be going over my top 5 features found in the brand new Inkscape 1.0. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and help articles covering a variety of free software, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to things like my GIMP Help Center app, ebooks like my GIMP Book of Layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership off with a seven day free trial, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So as many of you know, Inkscape today released the brand new Inkscape 1.0. This is a huge release, a major release. So first off, congrats to the Inkscape team. You can download the brand new version here on Inkscape.org. Just click the download now button here. That takes you to the download page and you could choose from a variety of operating systems here. I went with the Windows option, that's what I have, and then 64-bit. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, this will be covering my top five favorite features found in this latest version of Inkscape. This will not be covering by any means all of the new features found. I'll do that in a separate tutorial. There are a ton of new features. But the first new feature I want to cover, and these are in no particular order by the way, but that is the brand new user interface styling and the ability to further customize the user interface. So here I have the brand new Inkscape 1.0 open and you'll see that the icons are a lot cleaner here across the board. So the toolbox icons, the tool controls bar icons, the commands bar icons, the snap control icons, all those are a lot better now. Even the palettes down here have been cleaned up and you can see the little scroll bars here have been cleaned up. Additionally, a lot of stuff has been compressed. So for example, because there's more negative spacing here in between the icons, which I really like, I think it's a lot cleaner look, but now they've put some features here in a separate drop down menu or this little sub menu here, you'll see there are several different dialogues here that used to be in the commands bar by default, but now they're in a separate menu. So for example, align and distribute is located here. So that will open that up and you'll see the sleek scroll bar is getting pushed over here to the left, but if I bring up another dialog, so let's bring up the text and font dialog, for example. Now we've got two dialogs open here, and let's open up a third dialog here, just an arbitrary one. Let's go with the layers dialog. So you'll just see overall this is a lot cleaner looking. I just like the way the drop downs look and the way the icons look, as well as the spacing between the icons. Plus over here, if I hover my mouse, you'll see another scroll bar pops up on hover. And when you click on it, you'll see it'll highlight in blue. And of course I can move it up or down. And if I compare that to the older Inkscape, so let's open up the previous version of Inkscape here. You'll see the icons are stacked a little closer together on the left side here for the toolbox and just across the board really, as you can see in the command bar and the snap controls bar. But as well, you'll see that the scroll bar here is sort of an older school scroll bar. So that just doesn't look as good. And same with right here, this scroll bar here is going to display by default. It's gonna be that chunkier scroll bar it's not going to show up on hover. It's just going to be like this by default. So not quite as sleek there with the older version. Here again, by comparison, is the newer version. And I forgot to mention that the tools are grouped here and they've also been rearranged. So the tools are now rearranged based on really whether or not they're related to one another, as well as how commonly used those tools are. So the tools make a bit more sense now, the tool order. So you've got the selection tools up at the top here, the shape tools below that. You've got the drawing tools here as well as the text tool. Below that you've got the color tools. Below that are really the more obscure tools. And at the very bottom you've got the canvas tools here. So you've got the zoom and the measure tool. So the grouping of these tools makes a bit more sense now. And the most exciting feature that's come with these user interface changes and updates is the ability now to further customize your theme and its colors. So for example if I go to edit preferences and here you'll see I'm under the interface option and under theme. So now you've got several options here in terms of the icons and the themes. Right now these are both set to system. For starters I could change this to the dark theme. That's everybody's favorite of course. There's also some other themes here so we've got high contrast, 
and we've got the inverse high contrast, Windows 32, and then of course still the system theme there. So I've got the dark theme option checked. You've also got a variety of icon options you can use. So right now we're at the system icons. These are the default. You've also got some other options including high color. And high color is actually the default there. Multicolor. So now you'll see the various tool groups here have different colors. So that just makes it easier to see which group of tool you're about to use. And come over here to Tango. We're going to come back to multicolor, but Tango is another option. It's just a different style of icons there. And then of course, you've got the system icons, which is the high color. So I want to demonstrate something using the system icons. If I come down here and check use symbolic icons, that will change everything to a single color. Right now, this is going to be white by default. But what I can actually do is check this use default colors for icons off. So when I turn that off, now I can come over here to icon color. And this part's really cool. So I can change this to whatever color I want based on any of these various color modes. So sticking with RGB, I can sit here and tweak the colors of the icons. And now I've got this cool turquoise color going on here. I can just continue adjusting this. So whatever color you want that to be, and then just exit out. Now you've got some new icon colors. And you've also got options to adjust the highlight colors as well. Right now you can't really see any of them. So let's switch this over to the multicolor option. So you'll see now that this is looking different than it did before. The reason for that is we still have use symbolic icons checked and the use default colors for icons unchecked. If I were to check the use default colors and uncheck use symbolic, that will switch everything back to the original colors. So I don't like this as much. Let's go back to the way it was. So I'll turn on symbolic, uncheck use default. And now we can change the colors of the multicolor icons. So let's start with the pinkish color here. And I'm just going to drag this. And you'll see the colors up top here changing as I adjust this. Let's go with this color right here. And then I can also change the colors here. So let's maybe come over to HSL and just shift this over. Go with like a reddish color. So you guys get the point here. You can adjust this to be whatever colors you want for the multicolor icons. And you can see that those changes also take effect over here. So these icons are highly customizable, a lot more customizable than I've seen in really any program in the past, open source or otherwise. So this really opens up the functionality and customizability of the new Inkscape. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to come over here and go with the system icon settings and I'll come over here to icon color and I do want to reset this. So I'm just going to turn up the green and the blue options and then tweak the red option here. Get back to that turquoise color because I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to exit out of here and exit out of the theme options. The second new feature, which I think is one of the best new features found in Inkscape 1.0, might seem trivial when I mention it at first, but that is the fact that they have inverted the y-axis. So what I mean by that is here you can see the rulers now start at zero for the x-axis and zero as well for the y-axis. Every other program on earth does this. I don't know why Inkscape originally had the y-axis starting down below. So before this was zero and then this was whatever the max value was for the y-axis. It just made things super confusing and it also to me made the program seem kind of amateur. And it was also a deal breaker for a lot of designers who just thought that this was totally backwards and they couldn't work with it. So I'm really glad they've gone in here and made this simple fix. It's really going to make all the difference and it's going to make designing an Inkscape make a lot more sense. The third top new feature in my opinion found in Inkscape is the brand new split preview feature or the split view feature. So what this does is it allows you to preview your finished designs on the left side of what's called a split line. And on the right side, you can preview your designs in outline mode. So for those of you who are familiar with GIMP, you'll know that GIMP has a split view option and that allows you to show your finished edited images on the left side of the split line. And on the right side, it'll be the unedited images. And it's also found in Darktable as well, actually. So this is something that's being found across almost all open source programs now. But in Inkscape, I think they did a really great job of integrating the split view option into the way that vector designing works. So let me demonstrate. I'll start by opening up a vector design. I'll go to File, Open. And I'm just going to go with this logo design I did in another tutorial and click Open. So here's my design and there is some vector artwork going on here. If I hit control six, 
That's gonna bring up that split view mode. So now we have a split line here. On the right side of the split line is outline mode. On the left side is the finished design. So if I drag this over, I can see all the paths or all the outlines going on in my drawing. So I've got a bunch of paths here and I can also see a clip that's going on. So the green line is going to be my clip. I'll hold control and zoom in with my mouse a bit. And the cool thing about this is right now I have my select tool enabled here. I can actually click and still select these paths with the split view option turned on. Additionally, I can grab my edit paths by nodes tool and I can click on a path or click on an individual node and edit them. So you can see here that I'm editing all this stuff in real time. It's still clipped here. But if I move this back over, I can see what's going on. There's not a whole lot of difference right now. Let me grab my selection tool. If I drag this in, change the position, you'll see now that path is displaying over here. This is just a really cool way to be able to preview what's going on behind your designs, what's happening with the outlines and the clipping, and to be able to select and edit those nodes, outlines, paths, etc. To turn this off, I'll hit Control-6. And you can also access this by going to View and checking the split view mode option. Below that option, you'll see another option called X-ray mode. This is actually the fourth item on my list. So the X-ray mode option is similar to the split view option in that it allows you to preview your drawings or your illustrations in outline mode. But instead of having a split line separating everything, what you have is a circle surrounding your pointer and inside that circle will be the outline mode. So I can access this option by using the view menu or I can use the shortcut key Alt 6. And as I select that option, you'll see there's now a circle around my mouse pointer and I can hover my mouse over any object here inside of my composition and that will enter anything inside the circle area into outline mode. And as usual, I can click on these and I can rotate them or do whatever I want. And this also works with the edit paths by nodes tool. So here I can select a path and do the same thing. I can edit the path, move it around and preview those changes here inside of the outline mode. So hit Control Z to back up there and hit Alt 6 to turn that off. So the fifth and final feature that I think belongs in the top five new features found in Inkscape 1.0 is the brand new LPE dialog or the layer path effects dialog. So the changes made to this dialog, in my opinion, are a quantum leap for this program. I think it drastically improves the old system. So let me demonstrate here. I'll come back to the old Inkscape and let me just draw a rectangle there real quick. And now I'll go to path path effects. So that brings up the dialog here. I'll click to add a new path effect. So this is what this used to look like. It was just a random list here. And it's really hard to tell what any of this stuff does without having to sit here and click on each one. And then of course, adjusting the settings once you apply that effect to a path. So I'll exit out of that. It's not super helpful. Let's come back over to Inkscape 1.0. And with my select tool here, I'll click on a path. And now I'll go to path, path effects. And then I'll come over here and click to add a new effect here. So here is the new live path effect selector dialog box. As you can see, it's a lot more user friendly. The icons show you exactly what the path effects are going to do to your path. Additionally, you can come over here and change the way your icons are displayed. So you can make the tiles smaller or you can go with a list view and the list view is going to include a description of what the path effect is going to do to your path. I'm going to come back here to the default with the larger tiles. And then if I come over here to one of the effects, you'll see there's a little arrow. And if I click on that arrow, we get some more options here. So if I hover over the eye option, that's going to give you a description of what that effect is going to do. You can also favorite the path. So if I click on that, and then I come over here and click this star, that's going to only display my favorites. So that makes it easier to find your favorite path effects. And finally, the little checkbox will add that effect. So now we've added this path effect to our path and we can adjust the settings here. And of course the interface for this has been updated with the rest of Inkscape. But in this case, I'm just going to increase the radius of this real quick. Maybe I'll go with about right there. So apart from the total redesign and revamping of the LPE dialog, they've also added some new effects to that dialog that weren't in the older version of Inkscape. And additionally, they have fixed or improved some of the older effects that were in Inkscape. I'll be saving those details as well as the other features I didn't cover in this video for my more in-depth look at what's new in Inkscape 1.0 video. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell 
icon and be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.